What's good, YouTube? It's Nance here, back with another video. And today, we're going to be talking about pinpoint pitching. Uh, I know it's a little late in the year, but I just wanted to get my video out there for tips to help you guys. I know a lot of people still play the game, and there's a lot of people still out there trying to get better at pinpoint pitching since it is new this year. I also don't see MLB The Show 22 coming out with a different way of pitching uh, I think pinpoint is still going to be the way to go, and I don't think they're going to change it very much. So this could help you guys going into 22 as well. Now, you don't have to do pinpoint pitching, but if you want to be competitive, if you want to have the most control with your pitches and all that good stuff, you want to use pinpoint. Uh, pretty much all the other pitching ways, it's hard to control unless you do it perfect every single time. Uh, pinpoint pitching, there is margin for error. You can mess up a little bit and still dot the corners. So I recommend practicing pinpoint as much as possible. Tip number one, if you're on next-gen Xbox, do not use the next-gen controllers. There's something weird with that controller, and it's very hard to do pinpoint pitching. I will go ahead and zoom in on the uh, meter here. This was the fastball. I didn't do too bad. I actually got a perfect on it. But watch this next one. See how like laggy that was? And it's and it's horrible. It was at like 42%. This is using the next gen controllers. Just look how laggy it is. Now I got 100% there, but again, when you flick it down, it doesn't go all the way down. At the longest time, I thought it was me, and I thought I just sucked at the game. But no, it is the controller. Go to the old-gen controllers. You have much more control on your pinpoint meter, and it's it's night and day. You want to you wanna make sure you switch. Your pitching will get a lot better if you do that. All right, so now we're on the old-gen controllers. Look how much smoother that looks. For whatever reason, the line is a lot thicker, too. I don't know why. But it's just much smoother. I'm one of the very few people that have played on PlayStation and Xbox. This is as close as it gets to the PlayStation uh, gameplay. Obviously, it's a lot smoother and better on PlayStation. So if you're debating on which one you want to do, I would definitely go with PlayStation. It does play a lot more smoother. But I'm on Xbox, so we had to find a way. Uh, old gen controllers, definitely the way to go pretty much plays like PlayStation as far as pinpoint pitching goes. All right, now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of things. Once you've selected pinpoint, you got everything ready, you got the camera that you like, we'll go over that on a little bit, and you pick your pitch. The first thing you want to do is watch the uh, little tracer line that gives you an idea of uh, how fast you should flick your stick and how fast you should move it to execute your pitch and I'll show you what I mean. So once you pick your pitch, the uh, pinpoint circle will pop up. A little white dot will kind of trace the pattern that you need to follow. And you really want to pay attention to that. When I first started out, I didn't watch that because I didn't think it was important. This is giving you an idea of how fast you need to trace that line so you can have perfect accuracy. Some are slower than others and some are quicker than others. So you really want to pay attention to that white dot and see how fast it's going. Another big tip here, when you're doing pinpoint, do not watch your pitcher. Watch the circle. Do not look at your pitcher. If you look at your pitcher, it'll throw you off and it'll throw off the groove that you have on your pinpoint. If your line is green, you're doing great. Now, if there's spots that you're struggling, like a, say a splitter, that's a pretty difficult pitch to throw on pinpoint and you can improve on that and see where you're messing up by watching the line if you see here see at the top left there's a little bit of yellow that means that something was going on something was wrong when I was tracing that shape and I either slowed down I might have sped up you want to make sure that you're watching your feedback on every single pitch to see you know, where you're struggling. Are you going too fast? Are you going too slow? You're not going to be good at it at first, but 
as time goes on, you'll get better and better. I always say the best way to practice is doing, you know, conquests or moments and stuff like that. Jumping in practice mode is boring. No one wants to do that. So it's it's pretty much the same when you're on different difficulties. I think it's a little bit different, but it's the same concept and you can really get, you know, the feel for it just by doing conquests and stuff like that. Don't sit in practice mode all day. Make it productive somehow. Go to conquest. Do all that stuff. The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be. Honestly, guys, once you get to ha- get the hang of it, it is night and day compared to whatever you guys were using before. You can dot the corners pretty much consistently. The awesome thing about it, we'll kind of move the camera over a little bit just to look at our feedback there's margin for error. You don't have to get 100% accuracy every single time to get perfect, perfect and get the ball exactly where you need. So right here, we're at 93%, right? Flick it down. We, we even missed the circle a little bit and it's a perfect, perfect. There's margin for error on pinpoint pitching and you can still be very effective if you don't do it exactly right. See, 94%, perfect. Perfect. And I'm not sure what the threshold is exactly. I want to say it's like 80 to 85 is the threshold. You need to be above that to get a perfect perfect. Now, I'm going to go to camera settings and switch that up. Um, This is a big one. This is a big game changer for me. You guys might not like it, but this helped me big time. Go to your pitching view and switch it to strike zone 2 or 3. All right, so I switch mine to strike zone three. You can do strike zone two as well. That is pretty effective. Do not do strike zone one because you cannot see the ball if you were to throw it low. So the reason why I like these cameras the best is because you're basically getting the exact same view as the batter that you're facing. Most people use strike zone. Um, You can see the ball better see more of where you're throwing the ball you can i don't know why but i can dot corners way better with this camera view than the other one the other camera view you're so far away from the plate you can't really see the uh the baseball icon when you're uh locating your pitches and this is just a much better view you can get an idea of where how the ball looks coming in And you can really see the batter and see how he reacts to the pitches. And this is just a much better camera view, in my opinion. Like I said, you can do strike zone two as well. Strike zone two is a little more zoomed in. I like strike zone three because I like to see the batter. Strike zone two, you can't really see that. But like I said, do not do strike zone one because you cannot see that ball when you're throwing those low change-ups and all that good stuff. And also, I like this camera because it kind of takes away staring at the pitcher i had this problem when i used the other camera i would look at my pitcher way too much and i would miss and pinpoint pitching all the time can't really i mean you can stare at him but he's a lot more further away your pinpoint circle is a little bit bigger and you'll be more focused on that so make sure that you're not looking at your pitcher focus on the pinpoint guys play conquest play against the cpu and use pinpoint all the time telling you this only took me like a week to get used to it a lot of people hate pinpoint because they can't get used to it but i promise you they haven't practiced it enough so make sure that you're practicing as much as possible and just to throw this out there i know a lot of people use control freaks for hitting uh you don't need control freaks at all for pitching i have control freaks and i've tried it with pitching before It actually makes it a lot harder, in my opinion, for Xbox anyways. I don't know about PlayStation for that, but yeah, you don't need control freaks for this. My biggest tips for pinpoint is just repetition. Keep this same camera, grind out Conquest, play against the CPU, and just keep practicing. Watch that white dot. Try to match the exact same speed as that dot. Now... After time goes on, you don't even have to watch that anymore because after time goes on, you know exactly what the speeds are, how you need to trace it. It becomes muscle memory for you, and it's just it's easy. And the glory about it is 
I mean, every pitcher, you know, if two pitchers throw sliders, they have the same exact pattern and it doesn't change. So once you get the hang of it, you can pretty much pitch with anybody. So yeah, guys, these are my biggest tips. Go ahead and try to follow this as much as you can and see if you get better at pinpoint. I hope it helps you guys out. Again, I appreciate you guys coming in here and watching the video. More MLB The Show content coming out. We've got another Custom Leagues game coming out. Angels against the Yankees. It's a good game. Be sure to watch. Appreciate you guys. I'm out of here. Be sure to sub, like, all that good stuff if you're new around here. Peace out.